I'm joined now by Dale Priest Kelly, who runs a company that uses a menagerie of animals to help with therapy. And I'm glad to say he's brought with him Stoosh the Skunk, who I think has nodded off, which is probably <laughs> no bad thing, because when skunks feel threatened, well, the atmosphere would change quite significantly. It would right? indeed, yeah. Uh, how did this come about? Um, basically, I had a couple of heart attacks uh, in 2010, and um, while I was looking for a job, uh, a primary school teacher told me that I should take my animals into schools and charge for it and educate kids about, about animals. And then um, in 2011, I met a, a couple of teachers from a psychiatric hospital and the whole emphasis of the business changed completely and we, we began doing pet, pet assisted therapy. Because you've always liked animals. Oh yeah, yeah, had lots ever of pets. since I was a child. But were you surprised at just how therapeutic they could be in Daisy's case and others? Um, from the work I've done, no, not at all. I mean, an animals have this special knack and they, 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 they love unconditionally and they don't care about what you've done or, or what, what's wrong with you. And um, people have a natural affinity with animals as well. So it's quite understandable Daisy sitting on her horse and the horse managing to get her to, to move and talk. You say all animals. I mean, yeah, a horse maybe. I mean, I know Stu, she's quite nice to stroke. There you go. Pretty daring of me, I thought. <laughs> uh, but you have lots of different ones that perhaps other people wouldn't think are um, going to be therapeutic, including, I, I love to say this, Matt the carpet snake. Yeah, this carpet python. Yeah, I mean, what's therapeutic about a snake exactly? Um, snakes work in three-dimensional uh, way in, in terms of, first of all, there's the fear that's associated with snakes and um, people get over the fear, they have the snake around the neck, they feel the massage. You stroke a snake much as you would stroke a cat or a dog. Um, but then overcoming the fear helps with people's self-esteem as well. So they, they get an increase in self-esteem. Um, and, and it really helps bring people on. And other things you have, of course, arachnophobia is one of the most <laughs> common phobias, but yep. you have a spider. Oh, we, we do, yeah, we, we, do, um, we do phobia release as well, so we help people get over their phobias um, with a spider. The spider's not particularly brilliant um, in terms of therapy with psychiatric patients and that sort of thing, but millipedes are great with autistic kids. Um, they help with hypersensitivity of the skin. Um, we have big beetles that help people as well. So. Yeah, we, we use lots of different sort of exotic species to... Uh, yeah, there's a millipede. Oh, yeah, there, there's the spider. There's a spider. Now, look, I, I, I've got to ask you, how you go about getting these animals? In particular, how, how does one get a skunk? Um, there's a Facebook page called Pet Skunks UK. Okay. <laughs> okay. And there are lots and lots and lots of uh, really, really knowledgeable skunk people on there who've got pet skunks, who breed skunks. Okay. And um, she came from Liverpool, from a skunk breeder in Liverpool. Well, after, with all this info, um, Dale, I'm going to have to get one now, aren't I? You've absolutely spelled out how to yeah, get a skunk. They're not everybody's favourite pet, though, because they can be quite destructive. Well, she, she's my new favourite, yeah, because she's good, good. so well behaved. 